That check that microphone, Pikachu. You need to check your shit before you shoot. That's right. We learned this the hard way. <laughs> Remember that time you forgot to push the button and we were going for a half an hour? Hi there! <laughs> Welcome back once again. It is time for the Golden Age DC Comics 365 days where I take this hardcover coffee table book given to me about two decades ago by one of my best friends. This has been surfing my coffee table ever since and has been a constant source of comic book shop style conversations, the kind I wish to recreate with you here today. Now, thank you. I'm weird. I am. If I had money, I'd be eclectic. I'd, but I'll, I'm just odd. <laughs> and I'm glad you're here. We're going to be talking about comic books. We're taking this 365 days book for its intended purpose. We're going to open up to today's date, which is December the 14th. We're going to look at some comic book art of an antediluvian age. We're going to read the blurb, and then we're going to talk about comic books. And we're going to talk about comic books every day for the rest of the year. The, day, the year is winding down. It is. We have been talking about comic books all year long. And you have been the most important part of this show, our show, our conversation. Uh, I love seeing you in the live chats. Uh, if I can make the premiere... I also love seeing the comments. Uh, we, we, we are continuing to have comic book, comic book shop style conversations. And we are doing it here together. Thank you so very much. This is a 2004 Abrams Press publication written and curated by Chip Kidd, Les Daniels, and, Chip, uh, and Jeff Spear. There's a link to its Amazon page in the description where you can get your own copy uh, you can play along at home. It will look great on your coffee table, and it makes a great gift for a geek. I know. Uh, thank you so very much. I am always uh, impressed with um, just the ability to connect uh, with other people that love comic books. It is a testament to that we've made the right choice with our love, attention, money, uh, physical space, and mind space as well and heart space yeah and um yeah i'm very proud of this little show let's look at this one it's okay we're gonna have, this is a little bump in the like uh, we'll talk about the ages just a little bit the golden age runs between 1938 and 1955 that's the golden age, yeah. Then this is what the uh, the basis of, well, this is what the book's about, and the uh, the cause of our conversations. The silver age begins in 1956, specifically with showcase number four by DC Comics and the premiere of the brand new realized Flash. The Flash is now Barry Allen. He's a you know it's not Jay Carrick. And what else also happened was the Comics Code Authority seal of approval, which changed comics dramatically. And uh, there was also a return to super more superhero fare. And that's. But when is the? Here we go. I was, let's just spit it out, Sully. It's December the fourteenth, and I hope you're clobbering your problems and not being clobbered by them. You know, you can make a choice and stand up for yourself and your problem and to your problems, internal and external. Thank you. This is story by Dave Wood, pencils by Sheldon Moldoff, art by Charles Paris, from Detective Comics number two, issue number two hundred and fifty-three, March of nineteen fifty-eight. So, I just want to say the first time all year long we have. A comic that is not in the Golden Age. This is actually a Silver Age comic book that we're covering today. Let me wet my whistle. You know, with a little wax and a wall, the waitress walrus and waxed lips. This, this is an mouth exercise. Some friends of mine who uh, who can 
literally sing advised one time. I butcher that every time. That bizarre trio known as the fox, the shark, and the vulture. And um, it's Batman and Robin. Batman, the terrible trio, and another fantastic crime machine. How can we ever defeat them? Batman and Robin. Indeed. I love Batman and Robin. Batman and Robin are uh, the original kind of superhero team for me. I grew up with the, the Batman 1966 TV show and the Super Friends. And also the filmation uh, Batman and Robin cartoon as well. Okay, let's read the blurb. You can judge the size of a man by the size of the things that bother him. Asserts an old saying and Batman's popularity rests in no small measure on the stature of his, of his opponents. The Joker, Catwoman, Two-Face, and so on. Yet not every crook was classic, and there was a heady whiff of desperation associated with the fox, the shark, and the vulture. Also known as the Terrible Trio. Just the fact that the three are bundled together suggests their individual, their individual feeblenesses, feebleness, as does the fact that each one would commit crimes only in his own element, being earth, water, and air. Indeed. Weirdest of all, there is no indication that they're wearing masks. Appa these are apparently actual talking animals in business suits. They were not a hit. And that is not a Golden Age comic. No, no, that's... Uh... That's from Tech. It's from Detective Comics. Not Batman. And, uh, yeah, it's a slow news day. I went to the comic book shop recently, my local comic book shop. I was very pleased to bring some company. Um, Mr. Thomas Gilkey. Mr. Thomas Gilkey, thank you so much. Uh, I've made, I've made new friends through our YouTubes. Now, if you are, you know, in the usual live chats of the usual shows that um, you frequent, um, sometimes they're comic book creator shows, and sometimes they're pop culture shows. But uh, you, we tend to have friendships that we develop in the live chats, and over time. Um, I've got to meet people local to my area. And we have a core of at least eight people now that we meet. We've been meeting. This is, this is literally almost the anniversary of our first uh, meetup. We, had, we, we call them local meetups, mini meetups. And um, we meet up for, it was late December last year. And where most of us went back to the movies for the first time, we saw Spider-Man No Way Home. And there were five of us. And, uh, or is there six of us? You know, I got pictures. Uh, but we meet, yeah, and we just, and we've been doing it ever since. We do it every few months. We also now meet up for conventions as well. And especially for cosplay purposes. It's wonderful. So to meet geeky people. And to, 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 to use social media for socially. So if you are local to each other, make plans, meet up. Um, yeah, we're just, it, it, it's, we're real people. There's real humans involved. And, um, and I, I'm just truly blessed that so late in life, I've got to make, I made a new core of friends. It's great. I feel like Batman, and I'm with the Outsiders now. Like, you know, I've been working with the JLA all these years, and, you know, I have another team that, uh, and, you know, that's just really awesome. We've been talking, we started talking about Batman. One thing I love about Batman, I'll, I'm going to riff on Batman for a second, as for me, a spiritual, he's like a spiritual mentor. Um... We talk about Batman and Robin. We actually people got a lot of grief for this 
not like grief, but it's um, this is the newest issue of Batman. It's Batman 130 by Chip Zdarsky and Jorge Jimenez. Great art, but this is like completely fantastic, over the top, and no budget for special effects. But um, Batman <laughs> goes from from the moon to to, to Earth and survives reentry. And it's it's in quite impossible, but it's so over the top. But it's like, yeah, there's something to that. That's why we tune into these. There's a, a, a Batman made an Ultron. <laughs> That's all you really need to know. And um, but it ends up being a really good good story beats. This is a great sequential art, and um, this great pacing and storytelling, good dialogue. And it's about, like, yeah, this robot can beat Batman, but not Batman and Robin. I love that. They had all the feels. I'm a huge Batman. Look at this art. Look at that. It's Batman and Robin. Does it, does it matter which Robin it is? It well, You know, there's a story beat dedicated to it. There's a character that we have a non-delusional parasocial relationship with. His name's Tim Drake. And um, this is just... A, it was a really interesting story i think it lands flatly i mean it's going somewhere it's it's you know hey it's a comic book it ends on a cliffhanger it's supposed to be the finale of the arc yet ends with a mystery but hey it's a batman book you know so it's all about detective work and mysteries isn't it <laughs> i also got the uh i got the variant cover yeah huh this is the by david marquez it's a one in 25 and it costs sixteen dollars. And what and what I noticed is there's no. As we, as we talk about comic books here, we inspect comic books. Um, I may have I, I probably we, we talked about this on West last Saturday, uh, especially this specific issue. And um, okay, it's it's like I'm not knocking anything, but okay, th those corners are already dinged up. I didn't open. And this is when I noticed the out of the bag. Okay, I should have opened the bag and inspected it and maybe even bargained. You know, they did, you know, offer me the house discount if I had a box. I don't have a sub. I feel bad about subs. I gave up on a sub a long time ago and, you know, I mean, like, I, I neglected it. And I felt bad because I kind of, like, you know, ghosted my own sub. Um, a sub is a list, is your pull list. For the, Okay, here's a good one. If you're new, uh, what's a what's a sub? What's a pull list? You know, you make a list of um, the comics, and you submit that to your local comic book store, and they put them aside for you, so you don't have to worry about missing out on new release day if it's sold out before you got there. And that actually happened to me a few weeks back, a, few, a couple of months ago. I had to wait for more issues of Dark Crisis number five. I was like. It where what happened? Oh, I, I I didn't know it was coming out because it was I was there on new release day and it's it wasn't on the shelves and then people are talking about it in the past tense and I'm like huh what the <laughs> this is how we learn huh <laughs> oh awesome I was there too um. I took Thomas Gilkey to the uh, to my local comic book store. We went to a really nice Irish pub uh, that has zero televisions, none, nada. There are no TVs in this Irish pub. It's just gentle Irish music and pints of Guinness and fish and chips and red walls with, you know, uh, Irish nostalgic <laughs> stuff everywhere. It's an Irish bar in Boston. <laughs> and right around the corner is my local comic book store. This is my village square and my uh where i live there inside um was because i love being part of a loving comic books community uh, you know that's healthy i think is regular visits to your dentist i mean to your doctor i mean no regular visits to your local comic book store and to spend money there for no other reason than to spend money and to the spice must flow um, to keep our local comic book shops alive and open and well and healthy. And I'm so grateful that 
my local comic book shop survived lockdown 2020 and uh, the coof and um, let's scare I, I wonder if I can get you know I forgot noticed because I my bad ASL uh, alphabet that I've forgotten probably a third of <laughs> but I took Thomas to the uh, to my local comic book store which is also a vintage toy store he bought a Cara Dune action figure in the box with all of its equipment and a book about the Hobbit too so I think he spent maybe like maybe like close to 80 bucks I spent 60 bucks. Speaking of vintage toys, yeah, so I got this. This is a, uh, I had this as a small child. And um, I'll get back to that in a second. But also, there was a box, you know, like of there, there are boxes of uh, shelves of trade paperbacks. They're having a, a blowout sale. And it was like two for 10, five for 20. And uh, I'm, I'm going to show you my uh, what I what I got. I'm giving some I'm giving some old books a second life. We talk. This is one of the themes of this show. I mean, this old book of mine, the Golden Age of DC Comics, that Peter Fernandez uh, gave me through um, through a circuit of close friends of ours on accident. You know what I mean? Um, I've given this book a few lives, and. It's it's now on another life, and it's this has had a good life. This is a well loved book. I love books, and so I'm 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 getting to give these books a, a second chance. I got Mark Millar and Brian Hitch's Ultimates Volume One, Volumes One and Two. This is Ultimates One, and this is where the the DCU comes from. The DC Cinematic Universe comes from these, these these are the blueprints these are the original storyboards this is how samuel l jackson got cast as nick fury it was an in joke in this as well who would play who would play you in a movie oh samuel l jackson of course you know and see that was like the ultimate universe was his own thing it was 2001 you know, I got this. The Seven Soldiers of Victory. They are Golden Age heroes. We've talked about them before. And I may have shown a couple of those uh, Grant Morrison um, funny books that I never finished that series. So, I have now. This is uh, volume four of four. Um, and it has the end of the story. So, at least I can get closure, literal closure, story-wise. I got this because this is great. This is Hitman. Tommy Monahan, written by the Irish madman Garth Ennis. Great art by John McRae. Um, this was literally a hitman. Tommy Monahan has X ray eyes, X ray vision, but he's literally an assassin, a hitman. So now you have a hitman who has a superpower. And this came out of the, the Bloodline storyline, the annuals crossover. Like, I think only art. This is DC Comics, you know, mind you. So uh, this is in continuity. And it's running around the DC universe with scissors in his hand, gleefully, having fun, lots of bloodshed, lots of violence, and great art. It's funny. It's got a dark sense of humor. Garth Ennis did a lot, too. You might know him from Vertigo's Preacher or even uh, The Boys on Amazon, that show. Uh, so he's got a dark sense of humor. Uh, Garth Ennis has done a lot of things. He's like, He did an amazing run on... On, uh, on uh, the Punisher with Steve Dillon, God bless him. So, um, just, just that was some good stuff. But then into Punisher Max, he just kind of got into some gross out territory with me. But Garth Ennis is an amazing uh, writer. And uh, for, to finish it off, I got this. I'm a huge Flash fan. All right, this is Wally West, Jeff John stuff. And this is this great Scott Collins artwork. And then. In it too, we got some EVS. We got some Ethan Van Skyver, who is being inked by Prentice Rollins for for this one, which was great. And um, because I'm so used to watching um, his his uh, art streams, so I know that he uses he Ethan Van Skyver goes from non photo blue like a like a breakdown right into inks, and so he, he's like skips two 
two to two parts of the process <laughs> it's just like the penciling and you know um uh, or maybe like one part of it yeah he just goes over the penciling just like he goes straight into inks it's wonderful and it's great art and it's uh i love the these wally west flash stories and uh oh, i forgot how good these oh the, the scott collins art and the doug hazelwood he's the anchor right yeah so yeah the collins hazelwood team they just these were great flash comics leading up to issue 200 um, wherever it was a status quo change for Wally because it was a big, it was called Blitz. It was the issues 200 are, uh, they're milestones and they're celebrated. And, uh, gosh, we've been talking about comic books, haven't we? <laughs> oh yeah. So let's finish it off. So, um, it's, it's, um, it's comic, uh, Kamikaze in Davis square. And there have also a vintage toy store. This is, uh, I had this as a small child. Um, back in our first apartment, uh, right around when my parents split up, I remember this in, I had this in Sterling Square and brought this over to, uh, O'Callaghan Way and, uh, in the Southie Projects there. And, uh, this is a Fisher-Price, um, this is a, a cassette. It contains a loop of film. This is a hand crank. When I heard this sound, okay, I fell in love i got the feels i got emotional um because i know this sound so very well so it's got a little focus thing here so what you do is you hold it up to a light source i wish i could show you the loop because it would probably get a copyright strike but it's it's a it's literal film um on a spool and it's like so it's star wars a new hope 1977 it's show like about two or three minutes worth of footage it, when cranked at a proper speed and it's um it's it, it, it's footage from all three acts such as like there's a a, a scene where uh, a tie fighter blows up an x-wing and i remember always like cranking it forward to watch the scene and then cranking it back to watch it reassemble <laughs> and I, I would oh and there's obi-wan versus darth vader in the in the duel oh my goodness this is this is great. And there, there is the Death Star. Oh, oh no, there's the X-Wing. It's blowing up. Oh, it is reassembling. Yeah. It costs 40 bucks, but you know what? I just, um, very happy. So I spent $60 in my local comic book store on that day. Not to mention the 16 that I spent on a, um, on a variant cover, a, tw a one in tw a one in 25 variant cover. There's no price on this cover. I noticed that. That was interesting. It has all, and it's got a nice, pay, not a nice card stock, and uh, it's a good story. And uh, why did I buy it? Because I don't usually do stuff like that, but I can. I had the opportunity, and I jumped on it. Seriously, there's no other reason. There were two issues of Batman 130 left, and I had the regular uh, 4.99 copy in my hand, getting ready to buy. And I stopped and I saw this and I was like, wait a second, make a choice. And I did. I chose this one because just for no other reason that I wanted it and, and it caught my eye. And, um, and that's what it's like being a comic books fan. You can do stuff like that. Oh my goodness. I need to wrap this up. Thank you so very much for tuning in today. God bless. Namaste. Good luck. We've been talking about comic books and we're going to talk about comic books every day for the rest of the year. Thank you so much for tuning in today. God bless. Namaste. Good luck. And we will see you again in those funny pages. Please like, and subscribe. I would love to earn your subscription. Cheers. Bye-bye.